Hello everyone and welcome back to O'Neill Cylinder Construction in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video I tried launching the first plate, the first thing that people would actually live on and that did not work out. I have placed the boosters from the monument launcher thus making the station carrier launcher as heavy as the monument launcher and as powerful as the monument launcher. Still doesn't have the payload capacity of the monument launcher because of the immense drag and also the fact that it is not as many stages so it doesn't have quite as much efficiency in terms of staging but I decided because I wasn't getting quite as much Delta V in orbit as I needed to do to rendezvous to try out ascent guidance with the station carrier but that posed other problems it tended to turn too quickly and also uh, initially it didn't thrall down enough in order to mitigate the drag. I eventually decreased the maximum dynamic pressure in order to deal with that, but then that had the consequence of it turning even faster, thus getting even more drag. The booster separation also needs some work there, especially since it took out the payload, uh, so I had to tweak how many separatrons I added into the mix there. You can see me reduce the pitch rate in the hope that it would turn slower so it wouldn't uh, get to so low a pitch that it's going to be stranded in the atmosphere and end up dragging itself to death basically uh, getting too much drag and splashing down into the ocean. Unfortunately decreasing the pitch rate did not seem to help. Maybe it wasn't enough compared to the fact that I had limited the dynamic pressure which forces it to throttle down. Uh, I, I just didn't get quite a happy medium there but it always tried to pitch over too much. As you can see here at 30 kilometers it's pitched uh, to 20 degrees and the prograde vector is just above 10 degrees. That's not great. Oh and that's still happening. So, yeah, uh, I, I tried to limit the dynamic pressure a little bit more and then of course adjust the pitch rate a little bit more and also I needed to not shut down the engines. Uh, yeah, it tried to shut down the engines when it thralled down before. So this was a whole bunch of tweaking that ultimately didn't work out for me. Uh, so Ascent Guidance and the Station Carrier Rocket, not the best of friends. And this is mainly because of the tremendous drag. Also, it doesn't really understand how the payload is. The payload has a controller. Uh, it doesn't have any engines but it has RCS and it's at the bottom of the stack. It, I think the Ascent Guidance seems to think that it's going to be getting rid of it before getting to orbit. Uh, at least before I put in the extra stages there, you can see I've got some blank stages. That was to hopefully convince it that that's not going to be the case. But I'm not too sure it got the point there. Because uh, it still calculated a highly positive delta V despite that. Well, anyway, obviously the way it was turning was not good there. It was turning even more. Uh, maybe I should increase the pitch rate. But that seems to be the opposite of what you would think. But decreasing the pitch rate always seemed to cause it to go more horizontal more quickly. But it might have been more due to the decreasing the dynamic pressure that I wanted to allow. Anyway, ascent guidance didn't work out for me. So I decided to launch it manually and thrall down myself. And I actually didn't do as good a job in this case as I did in the previous video, ironically. But because I was lining up a little bit more carefully with the target, we don't have to spend as much time waiting in orbit to rendezvous with the target and I'll make sure that we're right behind it and we'll catch up so we don't need that much fuel to do the rendezvous. And I don't have to worry about the boil off, which is what I was having trouble with in the previous video. So, uh, the separate it's just weird. Those things separate very weirdly. Uh, but. I think that's partly because we're not pointing directly at payload and this is still very low. Uh, so the atmosphere is having an effect, but at least they got off without killing the payload this time. And here we are, getting through the drag very torturously. One other thing I did, since I'm not actually reusing the station carrier even though I really should, uh, was to remove the ablator. Uh, it's not that much ablator actually. 
But then again, when the station carrier is coming down, it's just a really big empty object and it's got a lot of surface area and it's basically capsule shaped, so uh, it depends on how you look at it. But anyway, I left that off to give us a better shot. Unfortunately, I ended up with less delta V than in the previous episode getting up here. I needed to do a little bit of an extra burn here in order to actually make over that I shut the engines down too quickly. But it turned out to be alright because I planned the launch properly. I sort of had a launch window and we didn't need to do more than a whole bunch of RCS burns. Very, very tedious and time consuming RCS burns, but that's how I did the rendezvous and it didn't take too much Delta V. So that's how it worked out. Here's when RCS burn with this thing sounds like incidentally and that's because I left the engine sounds for the RCS there and I saved here and this is important uh, we will come back to this save I'll guarantee you that uh, but yeah the RCS burns took a very long time which is why I saved I didn't want to go through all that again <laughs> and uh, that's why this video is relatively short because it was very time consuming so I let go of the plate and the plate has to maneuver. The plate does have its own RCS. That's the hydrazine there, like 40 tons of hydrazine. But then it's a 1,700 ton plate. So you need the 40 tons of hydrazine. I think I did put the right amount ultimately. That's it deploying. And we'll see that in daylight later. And so far, so good. Of course, I decided to use docking port alignment indicator to help in this case because these are extremely heavy things. And it turns out that it is helpful in this case. Normally I can do things without it, but this construction, I will be making use of it. But just as things seem to be working out all right, it all went horribly wrong. You can see some wobbling going on there and a lot of thruster firing from the station itself. And in the dark, I wasn't entirely sure what was happening, but I think maybe something to do with the plate interfering with the back plate, the big circular portion of the station, was what was going on, maybe. But we should be not angled in such a way that the bottom end of this plate even comes into contact with that. But maybe there was some interaction, because I can't see the back plate in the dark here. So I tried turning off RCS initially, but then it was drifting because it's, the station has a reaction wheel, but it's not that powerful. And I turned the RCS back on and then things started wiggling. It looked all right for a bit, but then things started wiggling again. There we go. And wiggling worse and worse as we got closer. And as the station wiggled, of course, the plate also wiggles. I couldn't quite tell what was happening. And then it finally started doing cracking kinds of things with the arms wiggling very significantly. And you know how this is gonna go, right? Yep. Oh, Kerbal. Well, making a big station wouldn't be making a big station in Kerbal without an explosion. Now, I went back to the save, like I promised. But then when I turned to the O'Neill cylinder, it was just a decoupler. It doesn't even have a decoupler on it as far as I know. Uh, this might be a distant object enhancement glitch because uh, it might simplify the object as a decoupler when it's very far away, but it's not very far away. It's within render range at this point. It should be the O'Neill cylinder. I had saved the save while it was in render range. And I tried to go to the tracking station and then go back to it, but... Even then, it was still a little decoupler. So, and it's called O'Neill Cylinder, so it's definitely the thing. Fortunately, there was another backup. It wasn't one that I saved, it was an autosave. And I restored that backup and the structure was there. This save is actually more recent than the save that I had been trying to use. So that was weird. Anyway, to try and solve the problem, I decided to add some auto-strutting, but the arms have already been auto-strutted to grandparent part. The main body, the main structure down the middle, uh, was not auto-strutted though, so I auto-strutted it to root part to see if that helped. Also, I decided not to deploy this panel until we actually docked. 
So that was another mitigating thing, though that's not how I originally configured it because the RCS ports are actually at this point firing at the plates because they're at the outer ends of the full plate. So anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It'll work. You can imagine how I felt at this point wondering whether it would all go to pieces again, start wiggling and all that business, but it didn't. Uh, but I was wondering if I could complete this whole station at all, and maybe it'll still have some wicked surprises for me. But for now, for now it let me dock. So we've got the first plate on finally. These are the heaviest pieces in the construction, and here I decided to deploy it finally after getting into daylight. There it goes. All right, so plate one out of 36, 18 of those being the habitable plates, and then 18 will be radiator plates. I originally had clear plates, but then it was explained to me that this is probably not a good way to get sunlight because the station is going to rotate, and then that means that people are going to be getting sun period like every few seconds through each window. It's going to be flashing. That's no good. So we definitely have to have the clear end facing the sun at the opposite end of the back plate here. So the front plate will be a clear plate that gets the sunlight. And then maybe the radiator plates are more like mirror plates that will reflect the sunlight to uh, increase how much of it gets spread over the landscape. And then the clear plate at the end will also have a closing lid for nighttime, something like that. I think that's how it's supposed to be with the O'Neill cylinder. So not, uh, not interspersed clear plates like I had originally planned. Anyway, first plate on, lots of work to do. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.